before us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world. And in the end, bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Acts 1, 1 through 11. In the first book, the Deuses, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day that he was taken up in to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you had heard from me, for John, John baptized the water but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been up with you in heaven, who has been up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Sorry, my glasses are coming. <laughs> So, yeah, I, this is, and to be honest, it's my preference as far as the, the commission that Jesus gives the disciples. I mean, we're, it's, we are more likely to remember the, the Matthew 28 reading where Jesus talks about Jesus, the great commission, and Jesus saying, I, you know, uh, send you forth to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, because of the relationship with baptism, that that um, you know, he talks of that baptism here, uh, but doesn't talk about it. It talks about them being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Um, and this and the sort of the beginning statement that he says that where it is not for you to know the times or periods that the father has set by his own authority um, but you will receive you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to the end of the earth um, you know and I think that the sense of um, one, uh, the whole idea of being, you know, what does that mean to be baptized by the Spirit? How do we, how do we know that in our own lives? How do we experience that? Um, and and what does it mean? And be a witness, not. Not that we're to convert people, but we are to be a witness <clears throat> to, to Jesus' uh, power and to the Spirit. One comment that was made, you know, it's not of your choosing of the time when God speaks to you. And that kind of reminded me of the Lord's Prayer, you know, thy will be done. It's not your decision what's going to happen or when it's going to happen. It's on God's will and his time frame. or in this case, on his authority. And I, you know, I don't know how many, what, what kind of experiences you've had of this, where, uh, you know, it's, you realize that the Spirit's been at work in ways you 
he had never imagined or had not because we just had some very good friends spend the weekend with us or their granddaughter graduated from Pillion with this and they um, they stayed with us um, and uh the and our friend uh patty was just sharing about her her mother is 97 years old back in columbus ohio and i but she also has a brother who has um, some real mental health, severe mental health challenges, and and uh, is um, and they has been out of touch with the family for five years, and um, you can imagine what the mother goes through, what his, you know his mother goes through, thinking about that, and. Um, and part of his mental illness is that he is very passive and will not follow through on anything. And, and it came up that his paperwork, he needed some paperwork he had to fill out or he was going to lose his apartment where he was at in Northeast Iowa. And uh, and they ended up contacting our friend Patty and she went down and gave them the information they needed because she knew they would not get it from the brother. And uh, and I just said, you know, how, what, what, how much that would mean, how much that meant to her mother, of, you know, knowing that her son was safe. Um, he most likely will never have contact with the family. Um, that's just what he has chosen for himself. And, uh, and when he does get in contact with the family, he gets very combative. Uh, verbally combative with them and so it's not a uh, it, it ends up not being a pleasant scene um, but now she knows he's someplace safe he's safe he's alive <laughs> that was you know that was a pleasure <laughs> thing to be alive and he's safe someplace safe he is uh, has contact with um, the churches, the Lutheran churches there in, uh, in the little in the town he's in, and, and uh, uh, you know he's uh, and has me has some acquaintances there that that look after him and help him, and you know, um, and in a very real way, it was everything Patty would want for him was hoping to put together for him and tried very hard put together for him but because she was doing it and as a member of the family he didn't want anything to do with it and so it was it, 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 it all happened you know it but it all came together in a way that um, in an answer to prayer that um his mother's prayer and, and her you know her prayers uh, and I think, you know, that's, to me, that's what this is about, is trusting the spirit. Um, and, you know, do we want, do we like waiting five years <laughs> to have an answer to our prayers? No. Or 5,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it is. We don't know how that is going to work out. Yeah. I think something that's interesting in this text is that the Jesus ascends and suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. And they said, men of doubt, why are you standing looking towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken away from you in his heaven will come the same way. Anyway, so they're like, he's not here anymore. Stop standing around, right? <laughs> um, and it's the same. So like we think that Luke wrote both the gospel of Luke and Acts, right? Mm -hmm. They're like continuations right. of each other. So they sort of pick off, they overlap a little, which we'll read when we get to the gospel. But this in Luke's resurrection story, the women are at the tomb and two men in white cloaks appear and say, why are you here? Jesus isn't here. Mm -hmm. You know, these like little reminder guys come in and be like, you know, reminding them what they should know, but they don't because it doesn't make any sense. I'm kind of reminding us all, stop standing around and go out and do something. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, why are you looking for Jesus here? He's among the living. 
why are you looking for Jesus in the sky? He's right. in heaven. You know? And I bet like, you know, thinking like these two angels that are look like humans at the time or something, like it's probably like I like to think it's the same ones. They're like, oh man, they didn't get it again. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, put on your human suit. Let's go tell them what's up. <laughs> but they're much, they seem much less afraid here than they were at the tomb. Mm -hmm. they, well they've seen him for 40 days they've been comforted and uh yeah. it's not just the two of them they know all their friends have also seen him recognized mm -hmm. him they 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 know the story is real yeah. and just think of the the comfort that we get you know, out of this book that, you know, has been gathered together and put together. And just have to thank God for the apostles and prophets, the people who put this book together to give us comfort in, uh, in knowing these stories and, and knowing that it's real. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it's also like much less traumatic than the crucifixion, right? The ascension. Right. Yeah. I'm sure they were still yeah. like sad to see him go, but much less traumatic than like watching him die brutally. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ascends into the sky. I wonder what that actually looks like. <laughs> well, yeah. they, they told us exactly how he's coming back. So we don't have to worry about uh, falling prey to any stories that somebody else wants to tell you oh he's he's back he's living in australia or, 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 or have you heard about him down there yeah mm -hmm. so, we're all gonna know it when he comes back and it you know it give, gives me comfort not only this book but the fact that every apostle that we know about that was living at that time gave their lives and you know how many people would die for a known lie you know john was the only apostle that lived to a an old age if yeah. you know, the john on past Patmos, whatever that island was, if, if that was the John that was the apostle that Jesus loved, but everybody else <laughs> suffered a not very pleasant death. And I think if it was a uh, if I was dying for a lie, I'd be screaming and saying, oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. I gave up. Uh, yeah. and I meant anyone read the gospel or I mean, read the psalm. I'm sorry. No, read. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth, who subdues the people under us and the nations under our feet, who chooses our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is king of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations. God is enthroned on high. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. I think the... <clears throat> The thing with we have a hard time accepting God's reign um, because it isn't like anything anything here on or on earth um, 
and I think that's the um, the tough part. It is was tough for the people of Israel. They had a hard time accepting that role of being God's people. They wanted it. They wanted to do it their way. Uh, you know, and and still do. We still do. Um, and, uh, what, I have trouble, yeah. what I have the most trouble with is the last sentence. You know, I can I can uh, tell everyone and and believe most of the time, except when I'm stupid, that God is in charge of everything. And, but that last sentence that the rulers of the earth belong to God who is highly exalted. He he wants me to put my faith in whatever president he chooses for us to or or has us choose. And it's sometimes that's hard for me to accept that uh, that he allowed us to put somebody as stupid in there as, as he has in the past. <laughs> Or yeah, I put that, somebody like uh, Putin in trouble. Yeah. Is that like the rule? Like the rulers need to remember that they belong to God, not necessarily that they are God ordained. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know if they're God ordained, but He allowed us to make it. The smartest thing that He did was we in this country put our constitution get together was not let us have a president for more than eight years, so it wouldn't hurt us too badly. So, uh, the psalm is a, like the slightly different version than the other readings. So my Bible is a little bit different. But instead of saying rulers, it says the shields. For the shields of the earth belong to God. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So that's like this one says hmm. shields and rulers seem, you know, not, kind of not different. alike. Yeah, I mean, like you know could say that the rulers are supposed to be shields for their people, but yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> it would be great if all rulers were shields for their people instead of yeah. wanting to be the A number one. Yeah. And mine just says for the kings of the earth mm -hmm. belong to God. Mm -hmm. Mine says kings. Well, mm -hmm. My vote's for shield. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, um, that, you know, what happens when when people lose sight of the fact that they are to, they are there to be, um, shields for the people and shields the shields for for all of god's creation not just not just the people but all the world that god has created uh, that you know which we, that's something that um, something we have been given uh responsibilities we have been given and i think that's uh, uh we have a we have a tendency it's, uh, as people to want to talk about what our rights are, but we we have a little we have a difficult time owning our responsibilities, you know, and uh, you know, and our responsibility for caring for the goodness of all creation, um, uh, for all that all that God has made, and I think that's. You know, people struggle with that all the time. You know, that's it's it's what if it's what I want, it must be it must be good. <laughs> and not necessarily. <clears throat> you were saying how in verse nine that the 
the paper says the rulers of the earth belong to God, but our different translations, some say king, but some say shields, for the shields of the earth belong to God. But shields and rulers don't seem like the same thing. Do you have any thoughts on that? He walks in and you give him the hard question. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, I mean, again, it, it what we were talking about is that he said I mean, Shields commentary in my uh, Bible says you know be, they were so called because they were to protect their subjects. Yeah. It, this is it's it's uh, echoing back to the to the A. Or the A, it's A B, so it's echoing back to princes. Mm -hmm. So it's um, the the author had in mind the descript description as protectors, princes as protectors would be my guess. My armchair Hebrew <laughs> assessment. Yeah, I'll say we got there. Aspirationally, leaders should be protecting. <laughs> well, the, pro the problem again, uh, when you read the psalm like it's laid out here, you don't you don't get the you don't get the poetic structure of it when it's written out in your Bible. So, I can see where that'd be confusing. Hmm. So, hmm. Should we go to your favorite book? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I just call me Ephesians. Okay. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. I don't know why you don't like this book. It's a feel-good book. <laughs> I like it. It's pretty nice book. Yeah. I wish that in verse 21, though, they said not only in this age, but also in the ages to come instead of just... Don't get me started on it. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> we got plenty of time this morning. <laughs> it's not the same body that Paul writes about in Corinthians. You think maybe Paul didn't write Ephesians? That's what it, that's what it, Intelligent scholars of today think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going along with them. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I've said it before, you know, I'm new to this, but it's like I'm in awe of all of you because it's like, oh, well, I know Paul wrote this and he didn't write that. And I'm like, that's your phone call. <laughs> Oh, 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 okay. He's getting us a tour. Thank you.
I did not. Um, <laughs> 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 Sounds like me responding. To this. <laughs> The, it, it, it is, it writes really well. The Greek, the Greek in Ephesians is better than anything that, that Paul supposedly wrote. That's another reason it's disputed, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the other, the other reason is because it comes from a tradition called the Cephalic tradition, which is of the head. And the so the the concept of the of the Corinthian body is the body of Christ. Yeah. We're all part of the body. And Paul lifts up the weakest members, right, as the as the one that's the most important. This is completely different. This is Christ as the head. This is Christ as the head of the body, and everything is suppressed underneath. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to attain the perfection, or the in the Greek, the teleos haner, or the perfect man, which is a very patriarchal understanding of body as well, by the way. Um, to attain to the level of Christ. And that is completely antithetical to what the body is in Corinth. So that right there is why this is disputed. That and the fact that the Greek is so much smoother. Mm -hmm. Those are the two reasons. Now, some of the old time pastors will look at me and like cross their eyes and say, no, you're full of crap. <laughs> but it's... If this is what I was taught. <laughs> well, it, it is. Uh, it doesn't mean we throw it out, though. No. We're not going to throw the baby out with the bat. <laughs> but if, if we, uh, yeah, if we get to thinking about, sure. uh, about it in terms of the head um, and that we're somehow lower than than christ you know that 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 is um, and in philippians you know what does paul say in philippians be imitators yeah your spirit was so yeah, it's it's do this four months in advance four weeks four weeks it's just different it's it's not even nuanced it's just completely upside down mm -hmm. sorry for my use of poor language yeah, I appreciate no, it. Like, like what you said, like this is like setting up like Jesus as the head, we are all under his feet, this like hierarchical okay. structure right. versus the other yeah. visions of the body we have where we're all we're all part of the body. Mm -hmm. And like again, like how okay. Jesus so rule looks different than we're used to mm -hmm. because it's not hierarchical. It, the other thing to understand about this is it's very influenced by uh, Stoic Greek. Greek Stoicism. So this this book is very influential. Whoever wrote this, Paul, and and they use pseudon and they use pseudonyms. So this could have been someone that that was one of Paul's disciples, but they just had a different train of thought. Um, but they used to love to use pseudonyms because that gave the writer credibility. Yes. Whereas you know in this culture we don't understand that because it's called plagiarism. Uh, this this is just taking that name and 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 positing that name so it gives the the book uh credibility uh, but whoever wrote this was very influenced by greek stoicism uh, and the, the stoics very much believed in uh you know that's very hierarchical system but they very much believed that you had to do everything you could to attain perfection exactly. right your life should be a, a a journey of striving towards the goal yeah and that that this was a it was it was all about attaining perfection yeah i mean and that's where i mean there are a number of scholars will, will say that you know and that the church in a lot of, in a lot of ways has been more influenced by greek philosophy mm -hmm. Than they have been well aristotle years. mostly but you know the stoics were very very influential in this um now that, with that said um you know it's it's not I'm, I'm just being uh critical of the you know the writing but i'm not being critical of the the spirit of it um i think the spirit of this book is there's a lot to offer 
The Bible has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible has a lot to offer. You sure about that? <laughs> the Ephesians. Oh. <laughs> I mean, even even Luther was a was a redacted critic. I mean, he would he would he would uh, go in and very closely, you know, like for example, James. I mean, he didn't hold that very high in a very high regard either. So it's okay. I'm not, I'm ne you're never going to hear me preach about this. So <laughs> to go back to my previous comment, I, I sit here in awe of the knowledge that I just hear in casual conversation. And it's not that it makes me feel diminished or not knowledgeable, but it's just, I'm like, really? I mean, it's like you need a roadmap to figure out what's going on and who's connected with who or who's who in the Bible. And so it's fun to, to hear that and to, to learn those things. So thank you for sharing. I guess that's yeah. what I'm saying. It says they went to and school I, for four years. They, pardon? They, this is what they learned at seminary. And then they well, thought about it. Yeah, but I'm learning from people who have studied this for years. I mean, these are New Testament scholars. That, right. That, and for centuries. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther was yeah, not but, a few years ago. And I'm sure I'm I'm sure I'm not doing it justice with but I mean, would that just erase everything I said and go back to the <laughs> conversation? I'm sorry. But no, but it's it's what I like is is learning these kind of things. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't have it, it shouldn't have any impact on you know it's and just it, background. I don't find anything incongruent with meshing those two thoughts because Jesus is God, right? And so God is above everything. God, God is all powerful. God can do everything. God is who we look up to. God is who we ask for help. God is the ones who can do anything, you know. So Jesus is up here, but he's also with us. He came here. He he can be all things. God can be all things. The Holy Spirit is with us all the time. Why can't it be both? Well, let me let me clarify. I'm not arguing that. I'm arguing that Paul. Yeah, no, I, I has, yeah, different, has a different nuance. Yeah, so yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I think verse 18 is less controversial because it's before we start talking about, and it's it's very beautiful, and it's kind of the same sort of thing that Jesus tells the disciples in Acts that the eyes of your heart enlightened, you will know that what it is to the hope which you have been called like that's beautiful yes right and then like that hope and enlightenment is what we go out and share and be witnesses to i think that's the connection with ascension here ascension i mean sorry i just came in here but i got a lot to say uh, <laughs> I mean, the very the very nature of ascension is is very much dimensional, right? I mean, it's very much Aristotle understanding of uh, of the universe of the universe, and the, and that's the challenge that I that that I have with the ascension because it 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 assume and, it, and the scripture says he floats away up into the you know heavens and. But, but where is Jesus for us now? That's the question. And I think Rod's comment about he's up there somewhere is so common in our own understanding of God. But to me, you know, do we have a distant God that looks down and, and you know, can do everything and judge and do all the above? Or do we have a God? What's more important to have a God that's with you at the bedside? Why can't it be both? Why can't it be? Yeah, I, it, yeah, it can. I'm not saying it can't, but I'm, I'm just saying that this ascension thing is, if we get wrapped up and that's the only way that God is, then we miss, we miss the intimacy of the divine in our lives. And the ascension is very much under that model. It's the three-tiered universe, the hell, earth, heaven. 
what's below is bad what's up is good what's on the what's on the plane we're on is is a combination of the two mm -hmm. and that's aristotle i think one of the things that helps me feel god with me is just thanking him for all the little things in my life you know that would have come in before if i make a a green light because I'm in a hurry. Thank you, God, for helping me do that. If I have to stop for a red light, well, God, you must have wanted me to slow down. Thank you for letting me take that time. Because he's, it helps me feel like he's here with me. I know he's protecting me. I know that the Holy Spirit is, is there. And it's taken me a long time to really put the Holy Spirit up on the same level as God, the creator, and Jesus, the savior, and the spirit. Well, he's just around to help us out. Once in a while. But if we really believe in a triune God, they're all the same. And so this God that is with us has all the same power as the creator God, and the savior God. So if you, it helps me to to do that. It, I was just downstairs seeing my grandson. You know how how can you not see God when you look at a a gift from him? Mm -hmm. And it's just I think if we've spent more time thanking him for what we have instead of asking him to give us more. <laughs> You know, I, I think we'd be a whole lot happier or th thank him for what we don't have because he knows we don't need it right now. So it just. Well, and, and I think the other and I, I just reading and I forget who it was, but. It's part of it is it's a whole lot easier to talk about perfection or about purity than it is to talk about holiness. We know, you know, we can talk about perfection. We, we can talk about what makes things pure, but what makes things holy? What makes us holy? What makes you holy? How do we understand that we are wholly a part of God? You know, and that God is wholly a part of us. And that this, you know, having this sense of, of, of being holy, not being perfect, being holy in God's eyes. What does that look like? What does that mean for us? And I think, you know, what you're saying is, you know, we're slowing down so that we um, can, can really experience that. Because so many times we're looking way out ahead and trying to get someplace instead of being right, being in the present moment to, to say, yeah, thank you, God. Well, in the, when I say my morning prayers, I like to look outside and see what God has created. And yesterday when I was thanking God for all the animals that he's provided for us, not just for food, but for entertainment, and to, you know, keep us. All of a sudden, three squirrels came out of the bushes and started running around in front of me and you know then another squirrel came out and then a bunch of birds i mean it was just like god was saying well yeah is this what you meant okay. so how about the rabbits that eat our plants <laughs> thank you for that uh, I, I put out that stinky stuff to keep them away from the yeah plants. <laughs> we, we learned last night though you have to change that stinky stuff because they get used to it yeah. <laughs> oh, if you that's you only try to use the same job, stinky, you know? yeah. If you only use the same stinky stuff, they're going to be back. Yeah, because they get used to it. We that have a, a mallard duck that comes and lays eggs in our in our yard. She's done it for the last five years. And she usually does in the front yard, which is fine because the dog doesn't go out there. This year, she did it in the backyard. Uh, underneath the bushes, and so you can't just let moose out now. 
I got to let him out on the leash and I got to walk him around the yard while he does his business. And he's looking back at me like, why are you trying to control me? And he walked by the dog. He is oblivious to this thing. I mean, she just nestled right in the land, in the mulch. She looks, she blends right in. She doesn't move. But if he finds out she's there, it's going to be <laughs> bad. Well, see, God wanted you to slow down. <laughs> no. so i'm on the opposite end like, wildlife go away yeah. but i mean we have to protect her so yeah. well you're a that's natural it. protector anyway. yeah. yeah i think thinking about your question of like where is jesus for us now that like with the preschool kids, of sort of, we did like you know the life of Jesus starting with Christmas. We got through Easter, and now we're sort of like, you know, we'll do Pentecost soon or whatever. But the kids are always just like, "Is Jesus alive?" And I'm like, "Yes," but he's not going to walk through the door. He's not that kind of alive. And they're just like, public, you know, they have no idea because <laughs> it's like it doesn't quite make sense to me. How am I supposed to explain it to them? But yeah, thinking like a kid would think like what what does it mean to ascend if he didn't go up where did he go um and knowing that right god is still alive and active in the world but not as a body that we would recognize walking through the door but maybe in our bodies you know maybe we learn how to recognize spirit and jesus and the creator in ourselves and each other um but also you know where is god physically who the heck knows yeah, I think he he rose up because you look up and you think about the vastness that is there, and he's everywhere in that vast. Yeah. So it helps me to think about it that way. Yeah. Should go on to Luke. Sure. Because I need to go see that baby again. <laughs> <laughs> he was sleeping. Oh, I can read Luke. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that the and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending you, sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple of blessing God. Does anybody have a note after verse 51? It says other ancient authorities lack and was carried up into heaven. Hmm. I, thought not. I do have that I'm not. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think the the ascension is just a very slippery, tricky theological slope to preach on. So I'm glad Glenn's doing it. <laughs> But I think I think it's it's about it's not it's not just about Jesus going in a direction. It's about Jesus withdrawing. It's about the withdrawal of his physical presence and entering into God's space and God's time, whatever that looks like. How about it substituting ascension with enlightenment? Because we're enlightened by his actions, or he is enlightened. I don't know. That's a good thought. Like our thoughts, our conscious our, uh, is ascendant. There's something ascending other than our physical. And we're being enlightened by this. I like that better. 
Mm -hmm. um, the whole the whole event of Jesus being here was to reveal his way, his truth, and his life to us. And in a way, isn't that an ascension of faith, an ascension of our our being, our ascension of our thoughts? We're ascending to a higher level of uh, love. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, and again, I don't remember where I read this, but it was, you know, that uh, talking about one culture where they, they would talk about the stars in the night sky being holes. Being what? Being holes in the fabric of the universe, mm -hmm. in which in which the light of uh, the light of Christ, the light mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. would shine upon them. Almost sounds like a Native American mm -hmm. understanding of. So it's um, you know. So with it, and I I think that that whole business of being clothed you know with power from on high that uh when we see that fabric see it in that way that this light is as you say enlightening us i mean it's giving us power giving us understanding giving us um authority to do uh to do what needs to be done here on this earth in Acts and in Luke, it talks of being clothed with power and receiving power. Going with it. So mm -hmm. the, the, instead of power, is it the true faith or the true knowledge? I mean, what are they receiving? The Holy Spirit. Right. Right. Because the, I think he's like literally referring to Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descends and is in them and they all start speaking other languages. Yeah, I mean. When you and when you put this together with what Jesus says about you know uh, following His commands, you know, and that we are to, um, you know, He says to His disciples before the crucifixion that this is what He is, you know, what He is asking of them is they simply follow His commandments, and uh, you know that. And and those commandments have uh, all all to do with love. The commandments Jesus gives his disciples are not uh, are not the Ten Commandments. They are commandments to love one another. And uh, first to love God, yeah, to love God and love one another. And yeah. uh, you know, how do we how do we do that? You know, we're, we're, what gives us the power, the, the authority to do that, to, to show God's love. And I think, you know, that's what the spirit, the work of the spirit is about, helping us lead, trust that, you know, we've been given this, uh, we've been given this power, been given this authority uh, to share God's love. We've been given this freedom. I think would be the other way of saying it. We've been given the freedom to show God's love in, in whatever way we're called today in this moment. I think it's easy to lose sight of verse 48. I mean, we, we want to focus on this like mystical event of Jesus disappearing, but he literally says, you are witnesses of these things. And what is he? He's he's talking about repentance and forgiveness of sins to be proclaimed in all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Um, 
I think sometimes God God wants to get our attention and when because something important is happening and maybe that's the way that Jesus was able to kind of capture their attention is to do this this ascension event but the idea bless you maybe it's not so much about Jesus as it is us mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Before I comment on that, in this daily discipleship, the right one for this it, week, so probably not. It's, she, it's time yeah. for they Easter don't... seven. Yeah. And uh, I chose to put in the Ascension text. And oh. they don't make one for Ascension text. Oh, okay. Susie did want me to let you know, but she tried and they don't have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's why it's different. I wasn't yeah. able to talk about that, but. Uh, One of the things that, as I think about God with me all the time, that I'm supposed to be a witness to people, then God puts some jerk in front of me that I don't <laughs> like. And I have to think about, it's, it's not about God. He likes everybody. He, he even loves those Muslims that kill people because they're his people. He still loves them and I'm supposed to pray for them even if I don't like them. Or Christians who kill people. Oh no, they don't do that. Or, yeah. You think Christians were horrible to each other in the when they broke away from the Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah. and since. But as you said, it's it's about what I do and how I share God's love. So it's it's not just waiting for him to do something. I think this text, as well as many others, said, you know, it's it's your job too, Rod, even if you don't like that jerk over there, you know. So I've been trying to work on uh, getting past that. Mm -hmm. I've even got some relatives I don't care that much about. <laughs> <laughs> Let it all out, Rob. Yeah. Let it all out. It's, it's, it's me. i got to get over it. It's not them. And of course, I'm always the nicest guy in the world. So everybody should love me. <laughs> And I also think, Rod, you know, it's a uh, couple weeks ago when you talked about, you know, that you could, you know, even got angry with me at times. And, uh, you know, and I said, you know, but I get angry with, you know, uh, I get angry with myself. I get, you know, that is, and that's who I'm angry with the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, when I do that and get into shaming myself, you know, and, and there are all kinds of things that my father would say that, <laughs> that, that I will, that I continue to say to myself that I, and then I realize, no, I don't need to be doing. I don't, you know, if I'm going to, you know, love myself, uh, that I need to, to stop doing that. And if I can stop doing it to myself, it becomes a whole lot easier to stop doing it to other people. Yeah. Uh, stop beating myself up. Stop shaming myself. Or as they, uh, you know, quit, we in 12 step meetings, they will say, quit shooting on yourself. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we fill our lives with all kinds of shoulds and odds and instead of with, you know, permission to fail, <laughs> you know, yeah. and realize that we're going to, you know, that we're going to fail in that in, in times in our lives, and that's okay. Well, what I'm trying to realize is that if I keep beating myself up, I'm not trusting in God, because 
you know, all I have to do is just say, you know, God, I'm trying, and I know you've forgiven all the right things, the stupid things that I've done and probably will do as long as I keep trying. So you got, you got to trust in him because he told us that, you know, he's going to, he's forgiven us. Sorry, I just have to chuckle at your comment and probably will do. It's like, yeah. yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. I've been there, done that. But I also feel like I beat myself up for beating myself up. Oh, oh, yeah. And then there's oh, even oh, more like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just a, so yeah. like, yeah, actually, like knowing and feeling it are two different things. Like, yeah, because, yeah. yeah. A lot of the pressure that I put on myself is to put less pressure on myself. <laughs> That's not very helpful. Not bad. So, <laughs> just, just letting it go and saying, okay, God, have a great week. I'm going to run. Okay. Take nice Love your grandson. Yeah. Walter. 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 Walter Bean. You got to remember Walter the middle Bean. name. Okay. The middle name is the one that's most important. Uh, of course, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> Is your middle name Walter? <laughs> Dean Walter. Walter Dean. Dean Walter. Yeah. <laughs> Got a good friend named Walter. Just call him Wally. Yes. But when he gets, he calls himself Walter when he's all business. When he calls himself Wally when he's you know, wants to be a little more laid back. <laughs> Sorry for coming in late, but then <clears throat> so it's too close. Yeah. Yep. Our, our well, father, who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Put the devil in the hand of the people. Amen. 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 Amen.